very warm welcome to all who have joined us for today's program on role of educators in combating air pollution and climate change through Zoom or Facebook. We are overwhelmed by the participation in this webinar, and that just highlights the concern and commitment of leaders from the education sector towards clean air. As we gather together for this program, Delhi NCR and most of North India is engulfed with a toxic smog and its citizens struggle to breathe fresh air. The average PM 2.5 levels in Delhi NCR is around 400, which is equivalent to smoking around 18 cigarettes a day. The children are the worst impacted by this, who not only are at risk of lower lung function, lower cognitive development and higher infections, but are also unable to just go to their schools, colleges or play sports. This webinar is a small step to ensure a better future for them. Today's webinar is being organized by Lankare Foundation in partnership with US Mission to India. The webinar is part of a multi-year program, Saaf Hava or Nagrik, Clean Air and Citizen, that aims to educate the public on air quality, its importance for good health, and the role of public engagement in developing strategies and implementing programs for clean air. The program is supported by US Mission to India. We are thankful to US Mission to India for their kind support. Before we start the program, I will take this opportunity to share quickly more about Lung Care Foundation. Lung Care Foundation is a social impact trust that started in 2015 to focus on care and cure of 2.6 billion lungs in India through awareness, research, and clinical care. Over the last few years, to work towards better lung health, we have created a Guinness World Record to increase awareness about air pollution and health, set up a youth network across India of over 2,000 students working towards grassroots efforts for clean air, and set up another pan-India network of over 600 doctors advocating for clean air and highlighting the health impacts of air pollution. Over the last one year, through the COVID-19 crisis, we created information videos that were viewed by over 100 million individuals across India and provided medicines for over 60,000 individuals in rural India. Without further ado, I would like to start today's program by welcoming Mr. Anthony Miranda for his remarks. Anthony joined the US mission to India as the countrywide cultural and educational affairs counselor in August, 2020. He leads efforts to engage with audiences in India, Bhutan and the Tibetan community residents in India. Previously, he served as the public affairs counselor to the US mission to the United Nations. He has also served as the head of public affairs at US consulate general in Munich, Germany, the Director of Public Diplomacy Field Programs at the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan, the Cultural Attache at the U.S. Embassy in Sofia, Bulgaria, and as a Counselor Officer at U.S. Embassy in Madrid, Spain. Anthony, it is my honor to welcome you to this program. Abhishek, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. I am so, so pleased to be with all of you tonight as part of the US Mission to India's ongoing collaboration with the Lung Care Foundation, which, which Abhishek mentioned. You know, promoting clean air practices and policies and combating the climate crisis are key US government policies. And the relevance and importance of today's discussion literally cannot be ignored as we in the Delhi National Capital Region inhale what is frankly poisonous air. And I was struck by Abhishek's uh, figure that he mentioned 18 cigarettes per day on average. That's quite staggering. Um, so I'm really proud that we have partnered with the Lung Care Foundation on messaging campaigns to help educate the public on the importance of air quality to human health. And we're really reminded once again that, that every individual and each key institution, whether it's public or private, has a role to play in mitigating hazardous air pollution and doing their part towards creating long-term climate solutions. We're also celebrating International Education Week this week. So it's particularly appropriate to be having this conversation on the role of educators uh, and the education sector. And I'm so pleased to be joining this, this esteemed panel of educators and influencers because you guys are the ones who are showing exemplary leadership 
in engaging with peers and policymakers and in encouraging specifically youth to adopt sustainable practices and choices. You know, as each of the panelists shares best practices and combating air pollution and the climate crisis, I, I want everyone listening to, to have that same sense of, of urgency to be inspired by um, examples of innovation and to make a commitment to try to tackle these twin environmental challenges. You know, individually and collectively, we need to ensure the health and prosperity of the present and future generations. And indeed, you know, the health of, you know, the environment, our economies and the globe. You know, the Biden-Harris administration is committed to achieving a carbon pollution-free power sector by 2035 which puts the United States on an irreversible path toward a net zero emissions economy by 2050. And this ensures, or this actually includes rather, um, that uh, ensuring that the federal government is 100% renewable energy, is using 100% renewable energy by 2035. And it also includes dramatically improving waste management and water and energy efficiency in global US operations. <laughs> You know, we saw President Biden at the recently concluded COP26 uh, meeting of global leaders in Glasgow, and, you know, he said this was a, a, a decade of action and solidarity. And he said, developed and developing economies, so many of which are the most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, have to stand together and hold each other accountable. And the president reiterated that the United States has set ambitious goals of reducing U.S. greenhouse gas emissions by 50 to 52 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. And that goal is indeed in line with limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But of course, as we all know, the math only works if each and every country does its part. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, uh, Indian Prime Minister Modi also spoke at COP26 and also set ambitious targets for the country to mitigate the adverse impacts of climate change, which is great. But the success of all of these initiatives will really depend on the collective action of policymakers, of industry, of civil society, and of educators like the panelists or those tuning in today, the media and other key stakeholders. We really look to educators and parents to raise a new generation of youth committed to a sustainable and responsible lifestyle. We look to educators to network with peers and policymakers to align national air pollution and climate solution ambition with on the ground action, converting policy into practice. For its part, the United States is committed to increasing efficiency and resilience required to be a global leader in modeling sustainability and to that end, President Biden has directed federal officials to devise plans for converting all federal, state, and local fleets to clean and zero emission vehicles. We know that air pollution is such a large and growing global threat to human health, and it has significant economic consequences. Nearly 7 million people die each year, which is about 10% of deaths worldwide because of air pollution. You know, and sometimes people think that there needs to be a trade-off between growing your economy and protecting the environment, but there really, there really doesn't need to be. Since the U.S. Congress passed the Clean Air Act in 1970, aggregate U.S. emissions of the six most common air pollutants dropped by an average of 70% by 2015. And at the same time, our GDP grew by 246%. The State Department is working with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to partner with other governments around the world to improve air quality for their citizens. And in India, the U.S. Agency for International Development is also investing nearly $20 million over the next five years towards supporting regulatory reform and broad citizen engagement so we can help drive social and behavioral transformation and achieve maximum impact for those who are most affected by air pollution. We think that these initiatives will not only reduce the deadly impact of air pollution on health, on the economy, but will also mitigate climate change. And that's really at the center right now of US foreign policy, diplomacy, and national security. So as we look to the future, the US government looks forward to building strong partnerships with educators, with policymakers, 
and with influencers such as yourselves to support programs and initiatives that promote clean air, provide economic benefits, and ensure good health for all, but especially those who are most vulnerable to the effects of climate change. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing my fellow co-panelists as you present uh, innovative solutions to combat um, air pollution and promote clean air. Uh, and I wanna thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to you, Abhishek, thank you. Thank you so much, Anthony. And thank you so much for highlighting the point about the exponential growth in GDP while exponential reduction in emissions. That I guess is the key takeaway for us that economic growth can still continue while we are trying to restrict emissions. And many thanks to uh, you and the US government for the support for this program that has enabled us to engage various stakeholders from multiple different sections of the society. Uh, now I would like to invite Mr. Shailendra Sharma for the keynote address. Mr. Sharma is the principal advisor to the Director of Education, Government of Delhi. At presently, he's working closely with the Directorate of Education to conceptualize and introduce large scale reforms aimed at improving the learning level of students in the government schools of Delhi. We all are aware about the wonderful transform transformation that the government schools of Delhi have gone and the various achievements the students of government schools of Delhi have achieved over the, uh, over the recent years. He's also a member of the Delhi State Advisory Council constituted under Section 34 of the Right of Children to Free Compulsory Education Act. Prior to this, Mr. Sharma has been associated with Pratham, an organization that works in children's education across 23 states and union territories of India since 2002. Uh, Mr. Sharma, it is my honor to invite you for the keynote address. Thanks, Abhishek, and thanks, Mr. Marinda, for set up, setting up such a uh, wonderful context uh, to discuss such a significant issue uh, today. And I would also like to uh, congratulate Lankia Foundation U.S. Mission in India for taking up this initiative to organize the webinar on such an important issue today. Um, well, last Saturday was a very significant day. I would say two important things happened that day. Uh, at a global level, uh, the global leaders uh, concluded Glasgow Climate Pact. They signed that. And on the same day, uh, Delhi recorded uh, the third uh, day when the AQI was above 400. And as a result, the government of Delhi took the decision to close down the schools. So at one level, at a, at, a, at a more global level, the climate change issue was being debated for the previous two years, to, to, for, the, for the last two weeks to conclude in terms of uh, Glasgow Pact. And in Delhi, we were facing uh, this acute air quality uh, issue. So both converged on this Saturday. So it was just befitting when on, on this Saturday itself, uh, Professor Arvind Kumar, who I hold in very high esteem, reached out uh, with this idea and invited me to deliver the keynote address. So everything converged together uh, for this. Uh, and, and, and I'm so thankful for all of you who have come together to discuss this, this important issue. And I feel really honored to deliver keynote address on, on this subject matter. Well, um, in the last one and a half to two years, ever since the COVID pandemic struck us, I don't think we would have like uh, so closely realized the deep connect that exists between individual and the world at large. We have been um, hearing and our ancient scriptures talk about Vasudev Kutumba, but we actually felt the meaning of this, this term in this period when we, we saw that if one person is affected, how it takes to everybody. So if one person is not safe, then it is not that all uh, that any other person uh, is safe. So our lives are intertwined. I mean, no matter how much uh, escape we create for ourselves, we are creating a separate setup, more secure setup for our, our for some set of children or some set of people in some countries or or others. But our lives are connected. We cannot escape that. And, and that is what we saw in the last uh, few years, and we are we continue to see there. 
climate change issue and the quality of climate deterioration that we are facing today is also an outcome of, of, the, of the same interconnectedness that we have in our, um, in, in our lives. So for example, if I were to take a, an, an illustration, so just like individual's uh, own health and well-being is contingent upon the, uh, upon the kind of lifestyle one adopts, um, and, and many of the diseases that we face, uh, the doctors call those lifestyle diseases like hypertension, uh, diabetes, etc. It's an outcome of the choice that the individual makes um, in terms of how one were to live his or her life. And sometimes those choices are, um, are not the real choice because that is the only option probably available um, to that person for a variety of reasons, for lack of resources, for lack of awareness, or for any other thing. Similarly, nations also make certain choice. The kind of development trajectory you, you uh, employ, the kind of economic model you imbibe or, or the kind of industrial process you, you took um, will determine the health and life of, of, of your countrymen. So similarly, as, as individuals make choice, nations too make choice, and these, these uh, sometimes are, are um, actually no choice. It is, it is basically an outcome of whatever was available, whatever was technologically feasible, whatever was, 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 was cost, if, cost effective, and, and, and people make those choices. Uh, sometimes it has it has good consequences, and sometimes it has it has very poor consequences. And this is what we are we are seeing today. So the last two weeks, when at Glasgow, the world le leaders assembled together to de determine how to arrest this climate change process and to give better world to uh, to to our citizens. This was the 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 situation before them. It was it was to adopt say new choices in terms of say adopting new practices and how do we commit resources and how do we bring about behavior changes changes to adopt those choices so i think in the context of today the issue that we are discussing the the immediate um, environmental hazard that we face uh, we dread to step out of our house in delhi we are if you are in delhi I know some of the panelists are not in Delhi, they are, they are, they are in hills at the moment. But those of us who are in Delhi, we, we actually can feel, can, can see. We don't need any further data. We don't need any other evidence to actually feel what we are, we are actually seeing and feeling right now. And, and then the question comes that, is it just the responsibility of the state leaders? Is it just the responsibility of the governments to, uh, to do something about this? Probably yes, but also no, because this is such a humongous issue that no single government, no single state can, can actually do things about it. It's a collective responsibility. Of course, uh, different segments will have to take up, say, different set of responsibility, but, but it has to be um, everyone's responsibility. As an educator, uh, somebody who is working with children, what I feel is that children at times are at a receiving end, at a worst receiving end for most of the things. For the last one and a half years, ever since the pandemic struck, schools were closed. And today, when we gradually opened schools, we had to again shut them down because of this, this poor air, air quality that we, we were facing. So what, what we can do in such circumstances as an educator, as a, um, as a uh, uh, here, so some of the things that we in Delhi have started doing in our schools uh, can actually provide cue as to what we can do right from the beginning before it is, it is too late. And therefore, what we started doing a couple of years back in Delhi is to work on introducing some mindset curriculum because it's not enough anymore to simply uh, transfer knowledge among our children but also to enable them to process that knowledge, to apply those knowledge in finding solutions. So, to, so three things that we have done in Delhi, which may be um, of relevance in this context is, first we introduced happiness curriculum in, in our schools, uh, basically to enable uh, children to be socially and, uh, socially and emotionally uh, both stable and resilient. 
so 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 that is basically to take care of the emotional well being of our children the next big curricular reforms that we introduce we call it entrepreneurship mindset curriculum and it is here that we would uh, we find a lot of connect in what we are doing the entrepreneurship mindset curriculum is basically to enable our young children in the schools to find solutions to be problem solver it is not enough any more to complete your school education join any uh, uh, graduate school and then look for a decent job that 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 is that is not that is a old style education model probably emanating from the industrial revolution era where you are creating you are preparing your students for the for the jobs or the kind of industrialization you would want to, to take that may not be sustainable that may not be enough so therefore our schools are now working through entrepreneurship mindset curriculum to uh, to make our students more uh, geared to problem solver try to find out solutions that work for the communities for the for the nation and the last piece i would want to touch upon which is very recent we introduced is called desh bhakti curriculum this is a, if i were to translate it is it is a kind of say citizenship education it is no more enough to just read about the constitution to read about uh, about what is written in your civics textbook and not practice them in your life and as i said in the beginning our lives are so interconnected that one set of persons um action will lead to so many cascading effect so as a result how can we be more responsible citizen more responsible global citizen so that is what our children have started and as i said these three are all mindset curriculum because we want behavioral change we want children to live those concepts in their day to day life it is not enough to just mug up the textbook and pass because the problems that the, that that our generation is facing the issues that we are confronting if our children have to be prepared to be problem solver in future they have to practice that in their classroom they have to practice them with their families and with their community so 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 this is what we are attempting to do i know that we have a long way to go but but then um we have to get our children ready because they cannot remain at the receiving end forever they have to be uh, to take charge of their life and therefore as adults it is our responsibility to support them to enable them to be the problem solvers of the futures and contribute in present terms so in, with that i uh, leave the the further discussion to the illustrious panelist i i know most of you are an expert in the in the in this fields that we are talking about you would be able to touch upon um, more on that and and guide us and give us an ideas as to what we can do starting from our schools to make sure that the problems of yester years should not remain the problem of future also we should create better world together thank you so much thank you so much mr sharma that that was a wonderful uh, keynote address setting the tone properly where you've highlighted uh, the importance of the glasgow summit that has happened and then the air pollution crisis how children are at the worst end they are at the worst receiving end and taking the burden of everything and more importantly the three things that you highlighted the three initiatives that the league government has taken i've always appreciated them but never thought the linkage with climate change but now that uh, climate change and air pollution but now that you have uh, said it in that tone i understand on how happiness curriculum will uh, enable them to have better mental health to be ready to face various climate disasters that are happening entrepreneurship curriculum will help them create solutions towards clean tech and the citizenship curriculum desh bhakti curriculum will make them a better citizen and, and empower them to engage with policy makers and not just listen to policy makers uh with those uh, amazing uh, remarks we would now like to move on to the panel discussion on role of educators in combating air pollution and climate change to lead the panel discussion i would like to invite mr rajiv khurana who is the founder trustee of lunker foundation mr khurana is a corporate trainer a venture mentor a blogger a author uh, he has more than 40 years of experience in consulting he advises various startups and also sits is an independent director of a listed company 
Mr. Kurana, it is my uh, privilege to invite you to lead the rest of the program. Thank you so much, Abhishek, for starting it so very well. I'll just go by what Anthony said, sense of urgency, decayed of action, maths only works if every country works, and not only every country, every individual works. And there is a need for social and behavioral transformation, which Mr. Shailendra Sharma also highlighted through the initiatives of the Delhi government. He talked about Vasudev Kutumbakam. And while I was reading the comments, Minakshi Jha has also commented in the chat box, very interesting thing called Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. That means whatever we do, we do for every living being and not just human being. Because today's air pollution problem is not for the human being alone, but for everyone. And we, except for human, there are no contributors to this air pollution issues. Thank you so much, Shalendraji. And rest assured, next week I'll be back in Delhi and both of us will sit down together and wonder about air pollution and how do we work together and maybe with the help of all the panelists, bring out certain strategies in terms of channelizing the energies of the youth to work towards reduction of air pollution. The word we used was combating. Now, combating is a very heavy word, as if this is an army-like operation. And it is indeed today an army-like operation. Do we need a lockdown to see mountains 300 kilometers away? But this had become a fashion statement. But the reality is Ella in UK was certified to be the first victim of air pollution. And there are millions of them dying every year but the death certificate does not talk about air pollution as the cause of death. That is an issue. And it is not that the big countries are worried. Even the smaller countries are also worried. A place like Mongolia, where the school students are actually working in terms of monitoring the air quality <clears throat> and telling the government in terms of what to do. I recently read about King Jargal, a 24-year-old Mongolian who said, we are the last generation that can end climate change. We can and we will. So it is not only that in India that we are determined. Everywhere else people are. In Tanzania, a 16-year-old person, Gertrude said, you might think that we are too young to know about the risk and realities of climate change, but we see its effect in our daily lives. So whatever elders are talking about, kids realize it much more. And when I speak with children and I speak with them in terms of their careers and others, I said, now it's time to shut up all the elders who asked you this question. What are your future plans? You must counter them with a question. What kind of future are you going to give me? If you can't give me a safe future, don't talk about career with me. And the trouble in India is our young force between the age group of 15 to 29 is 450 million people, 45 crores, and the number is rising. And these are the people and their energies we need to channelize because they need to shut up all the elders and put them to work because they created the mess. And now the elders can't leave all the problems for the youngsters to solve. Elders have to work along with all these youngsters. But at the same time, this category of youth has to guide kids under the age of 15 who will be looking up to them as role models. And this is where our collective target amongst all the academia, amongst all the policymakers is in terms of how do we work on this. And let me tell you, under the Shan initiatives, even Lung Care Foundation has done plenty of work. We have held hackathons with Shriram College of Commerce hosting along with us. And, you know, colleges like IITs all across and IIMs participating with us, 115 registered in terms of how we can solve the problem. And our issue is don't try to change the entire country. Just look at 
two kilometers of the radius where you stay or you study and do something there. And this is what, with the help of NSS, Anshumali ji, last month, we also launched a program called ACT, Air Pollution and Climate Change Task Force, where Dr. Arvind has a dream. 10 crore youngsters to be prepared as part of the task force in the next 10 years. It's a tough ask, but I'm sure with all leadership think tanks sitting here and many more to join us, we will be in a position to do wonderful work. And this is what even in schools, Lung Care Foundation has been doing with 175 schools spread across and Sean has been supporting us. We have been in a position to work with 393,000 active volunteers touching 1 million, 1.5 million families all across. So we have a humongous task in front of us and we need to now think in terms of how we can. We have a very, very illustrious panel with us and I'm sure even the audience would be itching to ask many, many questions. My only request would be, please don't put the question in the chat box. There is a Q&A tab, use that so that my eyes are there. And I may be in a position to club few questions together. And I'm sure you are more interested in the questions to be asked rather than the names to be announced, please. And we will be running against time because we need to discuss many things. So this is going to be a kind of T20 tournament panel discussion in terms of combating air pollution and climate change. Let me welcome Dr. Raminder Kaur Randhawa, Director, Guru Tegh Bahadur Institute of Technology to our panel. She was formerly the Deputy Director, All India Council for Technical Education, Ministry of Education, where she was associated with policy making on all aspects of technical education and accreditation. Dr. Kaur has a PhD in structural engineering and has worked in area of noise pollution. Welcome Dr. Ravinder Kaur, please. I have the honor of also welcoming Mr. Anshumali Sharma, Officer on Special Duty and State Liaison Officer, National Service Scheme, Department of Higher Education, Government of Uttar Pradesh. And the secret was I met him in September, on September 29th when we launched the Lucknow program. And he came and said, I represent 3,7,000 NSS volunteers. I can give it to all of them to you. Let's work together. And we have started working together. So he is spearheading the show, which I'm sure soon 40 lakh NSS volunteers would be working along with us across India. Thank you so much, Anshumali ji, for joining us. May I also take the pleasure of welcoming Professor Najma Akhtar. She's the Vice Chancellor of Jamia Milia Islamia, New Delhi. She is an academic administrator. Since April 2019, she has been the Vice Chancellor of Jamia Milia Islamia, and she has worked for 15 years at the National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration, leading courses for senior officials for, from 130 countries. And she's been a consultant to UNESCO, UNICEF, and Danida also. Welcome, Najma ji, for this program. And last, and let me take the pleasure of inviting my friend whose smile always floors me down, Professor Dr. Shivakant Mishra, Director and CEO, Shivani Hospital and IEVF Kanpur. And he's also the Vice President, National Board of Examination in Medical Sciences. He's a great social worker and has played a very active role with Doctors for Clean Air program along with us. And he really inspires once he takes on the mic. So I'm looking forward to a wonderful discussion along with him. So the format is going to be very simple. We'll, there'll be quick questions and there'll be quick answers. A 40 second would be a wonderful answer. A 60 second would be a luxury. And uh, one minute could see my head dangling, so that's okay. But let's have great fun and uh, we should have some common questions. We should have some specific questions and 
the only rule that we will follow is that there is no rule. So in case you wish to say, Rajiv, I want to say something else to whatever the other person has said, just seize the mic and say that, please. But we are looking at a dialogue and not a debate. A dialogue means you say, you listen, you appreciate. And let's think in terms of how we can create a good potpourri of ideas which could be used by collectively by all of us. So my first question is addressed to all four panelists. And I would like a quick brief answer one by one. You know, when we talk about youngsters today and generally elders sitting here generally have a complaint, the youngsters are not that kind what we used to be as youngsters. To what extent do you think younger generation is conscious and ready especially beyond the bigger cities vis-a-vis -vis combating air pollution and climate change. Dr. Ravinder Kaur, please. Uh, I feel the youth nowadays is very, very well informed because of the social media law. You know, we've seen uh, so many students who are taking up this issue of air pollution with the air pollution levels rising everywhere, whenever we go out, you know, we are facing this burning sensation in the eyes, breathing problems and so on. So uh, I would like to also tell you what we as educators, if you allow, if the time allows, I would like to tell you what news, I would like to add to what has been already told by the other panelists, like uh, there are three things that they've introduced at the Delhi uh, government level for the schools. So now the AICT, All India Council for Technical Education and the Ministry of Education has also introduced a universal human values course. You know, this course, there are all the issues regarding the human values have been discussed. In this, there is part coexistence with nature. That is one of the topics, you know. This is very relevant to the nowadays what is happening to the climate, the climate change, the air pollution, all that. You know, in this course, the it is taught that what is nature, like nature comprises of the air, the water, the soil, the animals, the hum, uh, human beings, as well as the trees. Now, these are four orders, like there is a physical order, there is a bio order, and uh, I hope I have some time to explain these orders and how the mindset has to be changed for the students. So there is a, a, a physical order, bio order, and there is the animal order and there is a human order. So, you know, all these three orders, like physical order consists of the air and the water and the soil and the bio order, which consists of the trees. They are all in mutual relationship with each other. They are mutually fulfilling for each other. It's a two way process, each helping each other. Now comes the animal order. Now this animal order also consists of the animals. Now this order is also in harmony with the bio order as well as the physical order. Now all the three orders are in harmony with each other. Now let us talk about the human order. Human order is taking from all the three orders for its survival. But do you think that code of conduct will be seen in the universal human values, what we do is we try to create competence for living with a definite human conduct. A transformation from inhuman consciousness to human consciousness, consciousness or animal consciousness to human consciousness. Now, what we are trying to do is, now how can this happen? This can happen only with right understanding, right type of feelings and what how we have to inculcate in this curriculum and what we have to teach the students is this education and sanskars which is very important the type of education that we are giving to is we are developing skills skill literacy is given being imparted to the students now how these skills have to be used for the destruction or to disturb the whole ecosystem or to be in harmony with all the other three orders and work for prosperity and happiness of all. Every human being wants to be happy and prosperous. Ji, so ji, this ji. is thank one- Thank you so much. Uh, Ravinder ji, thank you so much for this. Uh, I'm sorry, we need to move a little faster on this. Yeah. Uh, education and sanskar is a very key point that you're talking about. So we'd like to also hear from uh, Professor Najma Akhtar ji in terms of how is she looking at this from a student perspective? Najma ji, please. 
Nasma ji. Ah, uh, thank you for yeah. giving me this opportunity, and I'm very happy that such a discussion is going on, and very eminent people are there, and uh, uh, so. I would like to uh, put in something. We have talked about schools, school students, young school students. and college students, all students actually youngsters. But, we, Let's look but into, I'm yeah. mainly dealing with the uh, university students ji, ji, who ji. have a. But I uh, strongly feel that the generation of today is much smarter than the generation of yesterday. Yesterday, year. And uh, they have uh, they have exposure to all type of knowledge, so they are not dependent on what the teacher says. And if the teacher is not saying rightly, he they can uh, stop him right there. So um, it's, uh, that's why it's essential that we give them what is needed today and what they uh, have to learn more. I uh, we are uh, in the university. Inside in my university and in other universities, we are nowadays working on the national education policy 2020, and it it is a very uh, unique policy and gives us a lot of uh, freedom to do new things. So what we have been talking since uh, last two um, hours, we it we have all the right under this policy to put it in our curriculum uh, and and not only the, in the classroom, but also in all type of uh, activities that are related to learning. And uh, in, in my university, the students have uh, their own groups and they are mainly, we cannot stop right away, but we can wish that it is no longer there the pollution so uh, we can stop them by putting a lot of trees so my university if you see jamia milia islamia is a hub of it's like an oasis in in between uh, delhi which is mainly a, a concrete jungle and uh, they also decided to uh, to discourage the vehicles it's all the decisions are being taken by the students because we give them a, a lot of encouragement so less vehicles or carpools were encouraged among themselves or using cycles which was something new because uh, cycles uh, means no pollution coming because of that and uh, uh, as everybody said there has to be a sense of urgency it has already reached the place it's not a coming thing which which will come in a few years it has reached so the sense of urgency has to be uh, visible in practically everything that we do. And it's not only government which is responsible. It is not only the directorates or the uh, UGC or AICT responsible for giving us direction. We have to be <coughs> individually responsible for it. Each student, each child and each teacher, everybody has to be responsible and the parents. That's also important. So um, I'll be joining after some time before your head starts turning like this. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate in terms of talking about urgency. And this is what Anthony was also talking about in terms of innovativeness, commitment, and sense of urgency. And I think our discussions are going in the right flow because Ravindraji started with education and sanskar, and we led it into further discussion. Now let's think in terms of what the students I mean, Anshumali ji is looking after 3 lakh 7,000 students who are only committed to the social cause. So what does he think from a student's perspective point of view? Anshumali ji. See, thank you. Uh, Rajiv, I think awareness is there, but there is lack in action. That lack in action, we should work upon that, that gap. And I am glad that LCF uh, is taking lead because, you know, uh, yesterday only Honorable Supreme Court has ordered Government of India to convene a meeting involving chief secretaries of four or five states, UP, Punjab, Haryana, and Delhi all. But uh, the government, the bureaucracy, the politicians only will, would not work. The civil society is very important. And in that context, I think uh, LCF is doing a great job. 
and I am happy that uh, NSS is also associating with LCF because you know at uh, school level what what a student inculcate in its mind that impact is long lasting in their personality and that gradually change that gradually act as behavior change communication. So this behavior change communication is very important. And that is the field where we should work, I think. Thank you so much. So lack of action, more commitment towards action and the behavior change. Coming to Dr. S.K. Mishra. Mishra ji, I'm just going to modify this question a bit because now we say that the younger generation is much more smarter than what we were. Now let's think in terms of what next. In fact, Gandhiji, when he was talking about uh, in uh, South Africa, that three R's must be replaced by three H R's being reading, writing and arithmetic to head, heart and hand. The query is, H for health has been missing in our major focus, both in education and also the impact kids have to face and the entire families have to face. What do you think the academia should do collectively to bring health on the main platform? Or else we will have jobs, but very, very poorly represented individuals not being able to take on the challenges that we think about for future. Mishra ji. Thank you, Rajiv. Actually, let me go back to your first question. I have to add on to what sure. our panelists have said. Uh, it is true that now in today's uh, social media era, uh, people are informed, but I totally disagree with the majority of the youngsters they are totally unaware about the magnitude of climate change, magnitude of pollution. This I'm pretty sure because once they, and I'm very, very much excited to see that role of educators in combating. See, the problem is education. Once we focus education and we educate, and as United Nations also says that education is key to address climate, or climate literacy has to come, which is unfortunately it is very much lacking. And let me admit, before even I joined Lung Care Foundation or their your Doctors for Clean Air, see, I used to read the news and I used to laugh. Oh, Delhi is most polluted city, ha ha ha. As if we are city, we are living in a very clean city. When I found Kanpur often comes over and above Delhi. So the problem is not only pan India, but its problem is now engulfing the world. And education is important to understand the problem <coughs> and to understand its impact, impact of the climate change. And in lieu, it will prepare the individual for, for to change the attitude or behavior which is very important and ultimately to adopt a sustainable lifestyle. And as you have rightly pointed out that it is impacting our health. So if we don't educate people that getting ill in today's environment is very, very expensive thing. Not only that you will be ill, you will be sick, you will be having a lot of problems, not only of the chest or the lung, but of various systems, including, I would say, the psychiatric problems, infertility, that kind of problems are associated with the pollution. So this and getting them treated is very expensive for a common Indian. I'm, I'm talking in Indian perspective. So uh, I will just stay on here i will add on next round thank you thank you so much thank you mr ji now you know we live in an era where bullet points are very important so let's come to a bullet point discussion my request to all the panelists would be to think in terms of top two or three bullet points which you would like to recommend to policy makers in terms of policy level initiatives for building air pollution and climate change 
in the curriculum, in the co-curriculum, and the extra co extra curriculum of the students. But let's talk about the bullet points so that if three individual bullet points come, we would have at least 12 or at least if club them together, maybe seven or eight good bullet points coming up in terms of what could be those policy initiatives. Ravinderji, let's begin with you, please. You are muted, ma'am. Could you just unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, number one is awareness. You know, first of all, awareness has to be created, as rightly said my, by my panelists, other panelists. You know, it is very important to know the magnitude of the problem. There is a crisis. There is a fire how set on fire type of situation is there nowadays and we have to first of all understand that there is a problem and awareness has to be created you know most of us don't understand what is climate change what is global warming what is greenhouse effect so all this has to be explained to everybody you know as i earlier said regarding the human values you know this is very important because first of all you may impose any types of regulations you may keep on preaching, but unless you are able to change the mindset of the students, you will or the mindset of the children, you know, when they grow up, they have to become good human beings who should care not only about themselves, but about the entire world, you know, care about self, care about the family, care about the society, care about nature, and then care about the whole universe, you know, so sub the most important thing is awareness. And secondly, it is the mindset. And third, we have to add in the curriculum, like a three credit course has been added by the AACT into the co curriculum of the technical institutions. In the engineering curriculum, three credits have been added only for these values. You know, if you know, you cannot, you keep on accumulating, you keep on accumulating, you keep on flying in the air, but what type of emissions they are creating? You know, we have to explain to the students. Nowadays, there is problem of even electronic type of pollution, you know? You created by this mobiles, created by these battery rickshaws. And you know, we, we cannot see them. These are all invisible radiations. We are able to only see the smoke. But you know, this awareness regarding once the students coming out of the technical institutions are aware that if there is a microwave, there is a microwave emission. If there is a mobile, there are mobile towers causing air pollution. So when they grow as individuals and then they have the values they know that how they can use technology, not in a destructive way, but in a productive way, how it is not harmful to the whole society, how it is going to be in the positive way. And first and most important all, it is how much do we need and how much are we accumulating? What is prosperity? Prosperity is just having little more than what you have. But what we do in our daily lives, you know, since we are born, take the example of your own neighborhood. Everybody, we always uh, encourage children, please plant trees, you know, nurture trees, create more trees, create more. But all parks are being changed to parking spaces. And whenever there is an open space in your house, see themselves, we are educators, we have failed the society. You know, I fix the responsibility on myself. We are not able to educate properly to the students. Wherever there is a space, let us have concrete jungles. Let us construct two more flows and then by constructing two more floors, then we have to give them a rent, then we have to earn more money by constructing uh, more number of floors, then with that extra money we buy more cars, more emissions, more carbon emissions, more air pollutions. So first of all, the mindset of the students is very important. So sure. that is Wonderful where we have it. to, yeah, that Jeep. is where we have to address this problem first, that how we can change our society. You and know? that's a humongous challenge in terms of setting up the mindset that, because we need to focus on the need and not the greed of the people. Very yeah, well said. Yeah. Uh, Professor Nagmakhtarji, uh, uh, how would you look at these uh, top two or three bullet points, please? I agree with uh, the earlier speaker Ji. that uh, uh, for schools and for universities and anybody who is in a learning uh, business should be uh, made aware and those students who are young and the future of India, uh, they have to be focused today, not we do not have much time now. So we have to be but I, I agree that this awareness should not be in a very uh, sober way, but it should be very aggressive awareness. Because the, the 
the problem has now reached us. It is very much there. So it has to be uh, aggressively uh, uh, told to them that this is the magnitude. This is the frequency of the waves which will come in different types and uh, also the uh, our future. If we see that my future will be like this if we do not stop and this will be the future of my next generation. People have to sit and think. And uh, the type of pollution related illnesses uh, like uh, Dr. Ravinder Kaur said that many things that we do not see, we do not worry. So um, that's why all the related illness which is related to this and um, also the competitions which I'm sure the uh, Lung Care Foundation has been doing in various ways. This, uh, these uh, quizzes, the competitions and many other things usually attract students. They come and they try to be part of it. And uh, therefore, it is essential that uh, the startups should be encouraged to see because they can be a, a separate uh, startup encouraging an encouragement which uh, so that they can find out what how they can get, uh, get rid of this or stop it or make people aware and also innovations in this area. They should be especially funded and uh, constantly and uh, if they are good they should be uh, uh, should be uh, maybe uh, given some prize or something a new thing which is i i treat this as a war it's a the, it's a war it's no longer the normal thing the last thing i would like to say is that now the new education policy national education policy has ordered has has part of it ordered it's not ordered it's part of it that ncc we talked about nss but ncc which was till now taken up by the students if they wanted to be part of it now it's going to be an option it has to be a regular full-time course with credits and a student taking physics chemistry and ncc will be able to get a degree so ncc and under the ncc curriculum that we are making nowadays with the ministry of defense yoga first aid disaster management and many other things uh, are coming up how to reach out during the disaster management they'll be the trained people to reach out if there's going to be a, and there's definitely going to be many disasters if we do not thank you stop. so much thank you no. so much this was very wonderfully said and i really liked your term aggressive awareness wonderfully said and i think this sets the course and let me offer you ma'am straight away and also to Dr. Raminder Kaur, please open the door for Lung Care Foundation to enter in and we'll work with your students with all kind of innovative ideas and of course Anshumali ji has already started working with us and I'm sure in Delhi and NCR with support from Shan we would be in a position to do wonderfully well along with the students with your leadership and I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you very uh, much yes, and Thank you very much. And I must say that I'll be opening the door for you. Yeah, Thank you so much. And we welcome. Yeah, Thank you so much. Anthony, you are witnessing a wonderful history being created on the set. Now the education world is opening for us further in terms of going inside and working along with the students, creating more leaders. We, this calls for a good amount of clap for everyone. Anshumali ji, how do you look at these <laughs> top two or three bullet points in terms of what could be the recommendations to the policy makers? Yeah, I would join uh, Dr. Ruminder and uh, Dr. Najma that aware, aggressive awareness should be there. And the other thing is in new education policy, we are talking about internship. So I would like to recommend that uh, this internship should specifically be largely in the field of environment associate uh, organizations which are working on environment because you know when uh, these young students will know about the problems of environment the the main danger of environment pollution then obviously they would try and find out ways to combat those problems so in that case 
it is very necessary that some more organizations some environment friendly organizations should come forward they should form a network and they should give them these young students a platform for internship because you know the policy is there the internship provision is there but i know when it because action action plan is not there so action plan is the role of education educationists as they are some a uh, vice chancellor is there some director is there i am there basically i am a teacher but i know there are a lot of teething problems in implementing these internships so interns if we can provide them a platform and one more thing which i want to emphasize is in the same way as they have made as elective subject ncc as elective subject nss should also be as elective subject because in nss society oriented students join and when it will be an elective subject at graduation level it would de definitely help them in working more closely for the society and lastly i would uh, like to refer our common future in 1987 that report of uncd gro brunt uh, brantland the norwegian uh, prime minister presided over that commission so i would like to tell we would like to tell these students that either we should work in unison for the environment or we will perish all together that should be there very well said thank you so much uh, anshuvali ji in fact lankier foundation has also supported almost 25 interns so far we can yeah. actually add many zeros to that Provided exactly. educational yeah. institutions give us the right mindset of the people with social consciousness and not looking for a certificate or money. Money we cannot afford. Certificate we can definitely give in case they can do some substantive work for the society. Exactly. But then the serious-minded kids must come, and we would be welcoming them with open arms from any institute they come from. Uh, Mishra yeah. ji, you are heading the medical education part. how do you look at it from that perspective for the policy makers to think in terms of two or three action points if person if you talk about two or three action points i would say educate motivate and activate that would be general for any any education policy but as far as the medical examination board is concerned because i am representing that national board which is the largest examining body pg examining body in the world as well as well as as an advisor to ministry of health there is a re, in a recent study conducted it has been found that it's high time for medical schools to introduce environmental health and climate change in their curriculum and medical student must understand role of climate change or pollution on health and must understand pathophysiology of diseases produced by these pollution or climate changes such medical education will prepare the medical professionals with the skills to combat various diseases which are arising out of this climate change and the pollution that is what i it is my take on medical education it is very important it's already there in the curriculum but not in the way it has affected now humanity so it has to be there has to be radical change in the curriculum and it has to come uh, at any cost thank you thank you so much in fact let me just quickly uh, share with you that medical students association of india has been working with lung care foundation and whenever dr arvind kumar has conducted sessions with them in terms of educating them about air pollution etc they have been rapt attention but then the question is these piecemeal programs have a limited purpose and you are absolutely right that if this gets interwoven in terms of the entire curriculum this will have a much more far reaching unfortunately impact. rajiv let me add that these poor students they don't they are not policy makers unfortunately yeah. they this has to come from the policy makers like us to suggest and to bring into the curriculum then only it will percolate into the pan india position that is that is very important 
And in fact, let me just quickly read out some very interesting questions which have been coming. Kalpana ji has asked, is it possible to make environment education essential like maths and science? Well, now the question of electives has already come and I think we are on the right track. So some, some, some developments are happening. Then there is another question in terms of you all talk about solutions, but uh, I mean, what are the solutions? We only talk about the problems. Well, friends, the solutions are available. The only thing is we need to implement them. There is an old saying, more powerful than a powerful idea is a powerful implementation. Exactly. The thing is, we know about these solutions, but we are not implementing this. No, no, and let me have... also quote a question from uh, Alok Mishra ji. How can we mold our pedagogy for conservation of environment? And is there any concept of green pedagogy? Raminder ji, Najma ji, I think if you say something, that will be much more reassurance than my talking about it. Green pedagogy. Uh, green pedagogy, like, uh, see, now we are having off online classes. You know, earlier we used to have offline classes. You know, in the times of uh, our old ancient universities, students used to study under the trees also. Uh, you know, and they used to get the right kind of education. We can't say what they didn't get the right kind. They used to sit in the open sunshine and get uh, study well. So, you know, nowadays we, the country is talking about hybrid type of education, like online education, as well as a mix of offline education. But, uh, you know, when we are talking about environmental pollution, uh, we are talking about uh, in this area. So uh, do you think that a student sitting at home and studying from his mobile, is it a healthy is it a healthy practice? You know, there are radiations from the mobile. They can have long time, long term uh, health effects on the uh, health of the these young students. You know, long, we do not know what are those going to be because no such proper study has been made on these aspects. But I really worry, and we should give these type of projects to our students. Like there is now Ministry of Education recently started hackathons. You know what happens in this? They give live problems to the students, and they tell that okay, this is the problem this type of uh, problem is there please find a solution and for continuously for 24 hours to 34 uh, 36 hours or 48 hours the students are supposed to sit in that room and find out solutions give solutions at the end of the hackathon and these type of hackathons are being encouraged all over the country pan india by the regulators so first we have to make a study on what type of like what type of green pedagogy do, do we uh, want to adopt? Like, do we want a paperless uh, type of thing or do we want only online type of study? So we can, of course, do an, yeah. some part of it can be added, but at this stage, it is difficult to Thank say you. what type Thank of you, Thank you, Najmachi. Very quickly, 30 seconds by it in terms of ped green pedagogy. I'm really running against time. The asking rate is 18 runs and over and we need to win this match. I wish we had a green pedagogy. Yeah. Because what we uh, it is uh, we have I haven't seen anything which is specially uh, called as green pedagogy, but uh, we can encourage it in all our training teacher training programs. We have to introduce this. This has it can be uh, nurtured and brought out, like teaching in teaching of everything leading to nature, a role of trees in uh, in saving us from climate change or, um, uh, or from pollution and other things. So anything which is helping, uh, which is causing this disaster have to be part of the uh, teaching of whenever the teacher takes it up. Because there's a, not only written in your curriculum, but a lot of things teacher can add to it while he is he or she is wonderful discussing. thank you so much and now we are moving into a 15 seconds answer bite and i'm picking up a question from the audience a wonderful question which has come from minakshi cha can it be made compulsory for the professionals to work two to three years for environment and then work on their own either in a job or the entrepreneurship i think let's have a quick answer from each one of you do you think it's a good idea as a policy initiative mm -hmm. because we are talking about aggressive implementation now can I say something? No. Yeah, yeah, anyone can go ahead, please. Uh, Take the lead. Initially, or even now, the doctors have to work in the uh, rural area before they come to the urban and they get their degrees and uh, everything. So there's always a, a, a social and preventive medicine which is going on in the in the near the rural area. Universities can have their degrees also 
based on their working at least having their internship or spending some time in the in the areas where uh, they can talk to people and make it more uh, maybe change their mindset yeah. wonderfully yes. as you have yourself said this is a war so if it's a war then it's an emergency and everyone gets into it so maybe it's a good idea to try that out but Let rajiv the panelist also quickly sir rajiv the yeah. out of 130 crore only 1 crore are working hmm so the, the problem is so that's what the about reality 29 crore yeah so we have to impact the mind of each and every people in hmm. this india or in this country so sure. that is i think more important just working on 1 crore people i think would not be suffice sure so uh, we should uh, think on some other terms also because sure. we should make environment friendly behavior in our lifestyle we should try to exactly inculcate this environmental friendly behavior in the lifestyle from the very beginning from the school stage and you know mm -hmm. as i said earlier that whatever they are taught at school level it has a long lasting impact in their personality and later on they will try to implement it in letter in the spirit and one Very more thing said. which gandhi ji said i think we should now again resort to back to nature back hmm. to nature like you are at palampur in the rehabilitation rehabilitation center so one thing is improving the environment and the other thing is strengthening your constitution also so for strengthening your constitution we all should try to work in such a manner that we should adopt natural things sure back thank you so much the, back to nature should be the mantra thank sure you. i would like to add rajiv the problem is economics it it plays a, a major role if we talk about all good things and they come at a cost and until unless we make and work on giving economic solutions otherwise what happens to plastic pouches or plastic bags we are looking see ultimately people the majority of people as mr sharma has rightly pointed out that 129 crore people they are not concerned much about environment or climate they are concerned about their own uh, i would say well being or their own survival so if we are talking see talking on a webinar and talking ideal is very good the thing is how we are going to empower the general population educate empower and then you get the result so i think it is a good idea that people should start serving ab how doctors serving in the village will improve the climate i i fail to understand it is not going to and there are issues and i think these needs needs to be addressed this is my take on that wonderful thank you so much and closing comments from professor najma akhtar please uh the pulse polio was changed the idea against uh, polio was changed because amitabh bachchan said that can we not use the um, the it for that and ask all our students to make very uh, touching but uh, touching the reality also and touching the man also or person also because films and videos and tv they have their own audience and they include the educated and the uneducated uh, najma ji you have made a wonderful point so i'm extending the discussion by one more minute and asking a 10 seconds response by all of you because in the classroom we dislike students picking up the mobile phone but that's the power of the social media in terms of spreading across the world all over and influencing people because we are each other's influence that's where the peer pressure comes in to to what extent academia can actually utilize the power of social media and the students in terms of pushing this idea further quick bite even now we are using it no no, no. Doing all by, our by design or by default both are different things right now oh. this is happening by default how do we make but, it by design but this will not go so it will become uh, by design also once this is over everything is normal this online teaching will not go because it has really 
help the students to reach no, that out. That is okay. But even if the messages of social media in vis-a-vis -vis social issues can actually have a very good impact. Mishra ji, what is your opinion? Uh, Quickly. 100%. I totally agree with you. And what you are doing at Lung Care Foundation is having impact on lakhs and lakhs of people. Suddenly things will improve and I'm pretty sure that it's going to work. So collectively we have to work on that. And there's no doubt that we are, we will succeed. We will succeed on that. Yeah, if if sensitization so and awareness is enough, then uh, Rajiv, I think uh, this uh, systematic uh, thing will work. But the only thing is sensitization is awareness should be enough. Absolutely. Then, then, that's then a they huge will be challenge. motivated to. Sure. Yeah. sure. And Raminderji started yeah, with that believe, awareness yeah, part. I, so let yeah. him let her conclude this, please. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Najma ma'am ji that uh, you know the celebrities have a lot of influence on our children on the society you know and uh, so they can really make a difference you know if they support this idea like every time uh, we can hear the voice of Amitabh Bachchan for polio or for COVID for anything else so like that if celebrities join us and take up this idea and try to help us then I think this message can reach each and every person in the villages as well as the schools and colleges so this is indeed a good idea that we also Thank you. these people Thank you so much. And our academic leaders are also celebrities within their own compounds. And I think they have a major influence amongst the yes. students instead of looking at the politicians or the celebrities to come and change the youth. The teachers have to change the youth. This is where, you know, very strongly we all need to be really working together. This discussion is an unfinished agenda. We need to continue this dialogue further. We need to deliberate this further. We need to debate this further because Perhaps in our lifetime, the problem may not be over, but in our lifetime, we should at least be working towards it so that when we talk about net zero target of 2070, even if we are not there, it is achieved. And that is where our honor responsibility is to prepare the next generation for that. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm really grateful to the US Mission to India, Anthony Miranda, for spending his time sitting through the conversation, also giving me a lot of encouraging smiles. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, Mandeep, for always guiding us and supporting us. And Shailendraji, Thank you so much for your keynote. This was absolutely wonderful and on dot. And those three pointers were absolutely great. And of course, our panelists, Dr. Raminder Kaur Randhawa, Professor Najma Akhtar, Anshumali Sharma, Professor Dr. Shivakant Mishraji for making it very lively and wonderful. Sorry, I was pushing you a bit, but I wanted to cover so many things in the limited time frame. And I'm also grateful to Dr. Ashutosh and his team at Kayakal, the health rejuvenation facility in Palampur, for helping me to host the facilities because they kept the office open for two hours extra for me so that I could conduct the session from here. I'm really grateful to them. And of course, last but not the least, my team at Lung Care Foundation, Dr. Arvin Kumar, our leader, Dr. Bilal, Abhishek, Matshri, Dr. Carmen, Hamid, Ashokji, Tolika, Neha, Kamla, and Zubair for giving us all kind of support. And last but most important, you, the audience, if you were not there, this program would not have been a great success. Thank you so much. Have a great time. Have a safe life. Thank you so much. God bless everyone.